He's the deal lawyer. And he's the certified coach. Find out what happens when these two professionals talk about universal questions that require insightful answers. This week in the premiere episode, the guys meet to talk about how to negotiate anything successfully. This episode starts now. We've got to talk about this thing called negotiation. Some people do it well, some people don't. So, in your mind, Steve, because i got to get a lawyer's opinion on this, what would you say are the three, at least the three biggest components that you would see that would be a part of someone being a really good negotiator? Hey, the PJ, I appreciate the question. Um, I like to think that there are about four components, just oh, to, ex- just to expand by one. Uh, <laughs> the first one is the willingness to prepare. Uh, what people don't understand is that when you negotiate, you have to prepare for the negotiation. And if you walk in there blind or cold or whatever, that can cause a lot of problems. Second thing is setting high expectations. You have to have goals. If you don't have any goals, mm-hmm. it's just not going to happen. You're not going to meet uh, expectations. You're going to have low. If your expectations are none or low, you're not going to get anywhere. Third, patience to listen. You've got to listen, or you're not in a negotiation. You're in a unilateral conversation with yourself, and somebody <laughs> else is making decisions. You know. And finally, commitment to integrity. You, you've got to have integrity in a negotiation. Yeah, no, I love that. And I think that's probably one of the biggest skills that's missing is that whole active listening piece. So I would definitely say that because if you don't even listen correctly, then you don't even know what you're going to talk about or what you're going to address. And if it is a solo venture, you know, just you talking unilaterally, then, then how is that even a collaboration? And I think that's probably more successful when it's a collaboration. Absolutely. And what I have found sometimes, you have to watch out for those negotiators who are unilateral, uh, one-sided negotiators they will sometimes believe they've gotten a deal Mm. just because they thought it, they said it, and they believe it. Mm. That's not collaboration. No, I totally agree 100% that it is not. So let's talk about that since we're kind of going that way now. Why do people fail at negotiation? What would you say some of maybe the big reason or a couple of reasons? I I think that the biggest reason why people fail is the uh, the the fear of negotiating. Mm-hmm. Uh, people get yeah. so tightly wound up because they know more than likely they're going to end up in a conflict. Mm. Mm. And conflict, as you know, um, can cause people to either uh, fight or flight. The fight or flight syndrome and everything. Mm-hmm. And so, when you're encountering conflict you need to understand that it's a very high likelihood that you may become emotional and you may have the natural human responses of fight or flight. Mm -hmm. And so going into a negotiation, understanding that fear that might be there, the conflict, you have to be able to kind of uh, uh, maneuver around that to stay balanced and focused in the negotiation. That's exactly right. And I would say from a professional coach perspective is we want to know what are those underlying fears? What's feeding that fear to make you come to the table feeling so jittery in the first place or being so emotive at some point when someone goes ahead and hits a trigger word on you or says something that kind of blows you off your game plan? Yeah. And and, and part of it is what is playing in your mind, in your head. Um, I like to use the example of me, and this is not necessarily a negotiation example, but I thought I couldn't swim. And the reason why I thought I couldn't swim is because it was fed into me Mm. and culturally and stereotypes that because I was African-American, I was a sinker. And I (laughs) believed that for a very long time Mm. until I had to encounter it and understand that that was not a logical fear. Uh, yeah, yeah, and again, the stereotypes, things that you play into your head, this kind of goes into a more implicit activity that's going on in the brain, but we all have it. It's pervasive on some level, and for you, it was this thing about swimming. So to kind of put a wrap on this, for the for those of you who are watching, you're probably wondering, what would you then say would be some of the best steps to ensure success while negotiating? Right. Um, you need to identify what it is that you may have an issue with that there's giving you angst or that you're fearing. Mm. Uh, once you identify that, then you have to understand whether or not it is in fact logical mm. or is it is it a real uh, fear that you, a concern or is it something that is uh, fiction? And then when you're able to identify and then try to uh, uh, hone in on what the issues are, then you can address them. Mm-hmm. and develop a plan mm-hmm. and then most importantly execute on that plan that's excellent so it seems like the, probably the quick way to go right to it and we are doing that right now and that is to say 
you know you don't start anything without some sort of plan you got to know what is the outcome that you want and if you're not doing that then you're arguing for the sake of arguing at this point or maybe it's pride or maybe it's ego or it's because right. you want to one-up the other person which these would not be good tactics in order to be a successful it's ter terrible terrible tactics and back to what we what we started with yeah sort of the four main things that make someone a successful negotiator mm -hmm. um, one of those is uh, having expectations so back to my swimming example mm -hmm. uh, the reason why it became in, extremely important for me to swim is that um, in order for me to graduate from college, mm -hmm. I had to be able to swim uh, 50 yards. And um, and so obviously, because it was conflict, I was fear driven. Mm -hmm. I put it off. I didn't do it my freshman year. I didn't do it my sophomore year. I didn't do it my junior year. I did it my senior year. As a matter of fact, I did it within the last month <laughs> of my senior year because I was trying to put it off so badly and everything. And so then understanding that I uh, had to go see um, a, a coach that would teach me how to swim and learn the basics, learn the breathing, how to float. And once you realize, wait a minute, I am in fact floating, I'm not sinking. Mm -hmm. uh, then you go to the dog, you have all those kinds of things. And they laid out this plan and everything. And it's a process you get into. Absolutely. And once you're going through the process and you're executing on the plan, mm -hmm. it's the adrenaline and everything, you forget about the fear. All you're doing is trying to get to that ultimate goal, mm -hmm. which is swimming the 50 yards, Graduating. Yeah. yeah. No, I, I like it. I like it. And that seems like it's most of life anyway. Most of life is always the negotiations that you're making with yourself, as long as all, also as well as the negotiations you're doing with people. You're always negotiating situations, moments, and a lot of it has to do with how you're feeling about something. And so, again, I would I can't stress it enough, and I love that you said that. You do have to know exactly what is it that you want that you're going for. Yeah. And then after that. Okay, put this plan together, and then what's driving it? Is it just something that just seems like you're just doing it for an ego stroke, or is this like, no, I really believe that this could be a collaboration between me and the other person, where they win a little bit, I win a little bit, there's a little bit of give, there's a little bit of take, what do you think? Yeah, so, and, and back to the listening, there's no way you can get uh, to a point in a negotiation where you um, uh, have a, a resolution where there, it could be a win-win. Sometimes it's not a win-win, but okay. you, you can't get to a win-win mm -hmm. if you're not listening and you're not taking into account what the other side is saying and try to understand what it is that they're trying to achieve. Mm -hmm. Obviously, you need to know what you're trying to achieve, what your goal is, but also you have to understand what your counterpart is trying to achieve. Mm -hmm. And once you understand and what is driving them, then it's possible to be able to find some type of medium where you can meet, where everybody can win. Mm -hmm. Because at the end of the day, we can really can't expect someone to say, yeah, sure, you win, because for you to win, I need to lose. No one likes that mentality of, well, in order for me to win, someone else has to lose. That's always going to create retaliation, some sort of re rebuttal back, back and forth, and you don't want that. What you really want is to say, okay, I know on some level that this person's not going to like this. But if I can present why that has to happen for this to happen, and, and then it doesn't look like it's such a bad thing after all, yeah. then maybe we kind of win looking at it from that perspective than them seeing it as in, I can't let you get what you want, because obviously you're going to argue for what you want. So therefore, I'm going to have to argue for what I want, and only just looking at it from that selfish perspective, which won't, won't work. Yeah, and, and I can't overemphasize I mean, uh, setting the goal yeah. and then understanding what your strategy is. And so when you're deploying a strategy, others may not recognize why you may be doing X, Y, or Z. The most important thing is for you to understand and make sure that it does in fact further your goal. Mm -hmm. um, I, I can look right now at some of these uh, uh, political races just came in uh, yesterday. Mm -hmm. And I would define, many people would, would argue, why did this person do this? Why did you do that? Mm -hmm. This was controversial at this point or whatever. But the folks who won, and, and there were some winners, mm -hmm. and they did some things that sometimes were some, somewhat controversial, mm -hmm. but at the end of the day, mm -hmm. they achieved the goal because they stuck to a strategy. And uh, I, am, I am absolutely thrilled when I see people deploy a strategy, stick to it, yeah. and even when others criticize or whatever, mm -hmm. but they know where they're trying to achieve, I'm all over that. And that's what you have to do in a negotiation.
I love it. I love it. Well, this seems like this is a, a good idea for us to negotiate the end of this video, if you will. Yeah. <laughs> because we could go on, obviously, and talk about this forever because there's some good points and there's even more stuff to dive deep in. But we think for now, we'd love to hear what you think. And so go ahead and feed back with us. Let us know what you think of some of the things that were said here. And of course, we're going to put up on the screen uh, where you can find Steve, where you can find me, where yeah. we can go ahead and take these questions on head on if that's what you're looking for. Hey, I appreciate it. And um, please, please, if, if you could, everyone, uh, send in your questions, your comments. You can find me at uh, Bold uh, Creations Holding Company. Uh, dot com is boldcreationshc.com also in the boss negotiator school on facebook and also i'm on instagram at e steve bolden so hey i really do appreciate it i hope you guys can look look us up and uh, send any questions you ha may have that's right so he's the lawyer and i'm the professional development coach who you can find at pj at dcdc LLC.com. It's kind of like a little rhyme. There's that little rhythm to it. So uh, next week, we got to talk about something else. That is the stickiness of being stuck. I find that almost everyone I know is stuck somewhere on some level with some part of life. And so, hopefully you're going to coach us and teach us how to get <laughs> unstuck. Yeah, you know? that would be and, the bonus plan. <laughs> yeah, and, and with clients sometimes I got to point out that they are in fact uh, stuck as well. Mm -hmm. And so I understand the, 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 the issue and I'm excited to talk about it next week. That's perfect. Let's do this. But for now we're out and we, and we will look forward to talking and seeing more from you guys. So once again, just let us know in the comment section below what you need, what you want to hear, or maybe if you have a chat We'd love to hear that too because Absolutely. we're all going to grow. We're all going to get better because we know how to negotiate. So, all right, very good. In, we're out. We'll see okay, you guys. Cool. All right, thank you. <laughs>